So I had this wonderful anecdote about how wit is such an apt name uh, for, for his dry brand of comedy. And then my friend Eric over here told me uh, John is his given name, so that went to shit. Wit for the past two decades uh, has had his own unique brand of comedy that has become a, a distinct voice in the world of cinema. Uh, he first introduced us to the, the wry, meandering contradictions of the urban Hoyt bourgeoisie in 1990 with his self-financed film. Witt sold his apartment for $50,000 and begged, borrowed, and stole to make this dream happen. It also led him to his first Oscar nomination. Um, I think that's truly distinct of everything that we're talking about today, of, of having a vision, having talent, and making it happen. Because he did that, he was able to drive us through the cobblestone streets of Barcelona, take us to the, the thumping pulse of the, of the disco scene in, in the last days of disco, and most recently, teach us the simple joys of soap, the color wheel, <laughs> and introduce us to the hottest slam and dance craze since the Macarena, the Sambola. Thank you very much for that. I also want to touch on something that Danny said. The entire time that, that he was doing this, he was functioning as the writer, director, and the producer, um, which is such a large task. And he's been at the helm of every single one of his films. And it's what's made his voice truly unique and distinct. Um, not to mention, he has, he has become a huge champion for young, emerging talent. Um, some of the people that you know very well, Chris Eibelman, Taylor Nichols, uh, Kate Beckinsale, Chloe Sevigny, um, Mia Servino, um, and the cast of Damages in Distress, and ultimately myself. You know, I, I, I first met Witt in the audition room, and uh, at that point, I hadn't seen his films because I was 12 years old when The Last Days of Disco had come out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I, I went home and I watched them, and I have been afraid to email him ever since because I'm terribly afraid he's going to grammatically check everything that I do. Uh, he is truly a wordsmith. Well, until he started tweeting. Working on set with him was a dream come true. Uh, it was such, such a memorable experience, and it's going to be something that I'm going to take with me, my very first feature film, uh, for the rest of my life. There was one situation, I'm going to say it with it, where he, he did a little diva trip, and he wouldn't come out of his trailer until we switched Starbucks to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Just saying that. I kid, I kid. Not really, it was scary. He has these eyes. Um, <laughs> all that said, um, it really is an honor for me to be able to, to stand up here and present this to you. Um, for especially someone who's been a mentor and truly a friend for the last two years. Um, Whit, please come up here and, and accept this award. It's really been great to see talents come out of nowhere and become very big, such as I think Ryan Metcalf will be, because um, this is a poignant moment for me, because right at this moment, our film's ending its New York run. And to have a film go off screen is like, Dying a little bit, but I have to say that dying a little bit is much better than dying a lot. <laughs> now this award is very, very interesting. It's big vision, empty wallet. And when I focused on this award, I said, okay, there are going to be some big vision honorees, and I will be the empty wallet. <laughs> and to be empty wallet when you're in your 20s or early 30s is is something. It's rather normal. But to be empty while at twice that age is a real, is a real achievement. So it's, it's also an honorable tradition. Um, I'd like to cite two filmmakers um, and their statements. Um, Roberto Rossellini, um, who, who ended up impoverished, um, said that in cinema, the root of all evil is money. And to a certain degree, it's true. 
um, and I'll get into that later. And the second citation is John Houston, who, who kept earning money, fortunately. Um, but he also said that in his experience, the lower the budget, the better the film. And I've had, I made four films, and um, two of them were very inexpensive. The first film, Metropolitan, which fortunately wasn't only my own sort of, uh, you know, uh, apartment sale money. It was fortunately some friends came in too, and other people. Um, but it was very low budget. And then we made two films with better budgets. And the shoot of the of Metropolitan was a kind of a dream. It's really wonderful. And then um, I was facing the, you know, the possibility of making this fourth film, Damsels in Distress. I was with the people who backed um, our second and third films, and they were talking about the typical independent film budget of three to five million. And they said, okay, we'll do foreign sales and star casting and equity partners and a distribution deal. And I'd already heard this litany for about 10 years, and those films never happened. And so I said, well, these days with digital cameras, people are making really good films for no money. I think we can go back to the metropolitan days and do a film that way. And they said, well, if you could do that, for the number I mentioned, you know, we can get checks from people we know. And so we went ahead, and what that allowed us to do is something I think is really important. It allowed us to cast the film with just the actors we liked, just the people who came in, who auditioned, and, and did the job and not have to do the list of stars you approach and, and all that. And thanks to that, we got people like Ryan Metcalf. And I think that there's plenty after about Ryan's career that it's revelatory, it might be helpful for some people who are trying to be actors, which is he had a very good agent, an agent I really respect a lot, but who only sent him out for pretty boy roles, for sort of um, Keanu Reeves, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt kind of parts you know, the young version of all those people. But Ryan is also very, very funny. And finally, he, he made that decision that, you know, to go with a smaller agent who would treat him as an individual with different talents and not just program him into this box. And I think within weeks of his going to the less prominent agent, um, but more insightful agent, um, he came to see us, he did incredibly funny auditions, one of the funniest auditions I've ever seen. He said, as he came in, um, you might find, do you mind if I show you something a little broad? And we said, no, no, we don't mind seeing it. It was, it was really broad, and it was really, really funny. And uh, it's great when actors come in with their character created and the director doesn't do anything. And so I thank the wonderful people behind this organization, like, it's such a great idea. Although one must admit that a lot of one's work one does alone, and it's good to have the opportunity to network after one's done one's work alone. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to thank Alex and Danny and, and Wendy and all of you and the very distinguished people I've shared this evening with. Thank you very much.